Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Andy, back with another PV gear review. And today, we have the pleasure of checking out the PV Penta. And for those of you who are some PV fans, you may have heard of this. Most of you probably have never heard of the PV Penta, and there's a good reason for that. Uh, the PV Penta was made in 2005 for one year only and it was PV's answer to the boutique amp craze that was going on at the time. Uh, PV felt like they were behind when it came to the boutique hand-wired style one channel uh, tone amps that were being built by small builders and so they decided to get in on the game. So their idea of a small uh, one channel boutique build was this. And the PV Penta is a 140 watt EL34 head. And it is, the idea behind the Penta was to be all of the marshals that they've ever made in one box. And I know, what an undertaking, right? So they tried to get as many as they could, but keep it a one channel amp which was an interesting choice. And so what they chose to use is use the highest quality um, capacitors, resistors, the highest quality transformers, try to make it the very best quality amp they possibly could. And at the same time, keep it a PV and keep it under the price of some of the hand-built uh, boutique amps at the time. So the way that they've chose to do this was with this five position switch here called the pentatone and the pentatone switch has five little symbols uh, for each uh, tone setting essentially uh, for the amp and it does have a second um, I don't want to say it's a channel but it does have a second um, side of the amp that you can switch to but the EQ and everything stays exactly the same, the gain, the volume, everything stays the same. It's just the, the tone itself that shifts, which is on the back panel. There's another one of these pentatone switches um, that you can set to a different style if you'd like. But you, like I say, when you switch, it stays, volume stays the same, the, the tone stays the same. So it's not technically a different channel. Um, it's just a different, uh, a second selection essentially. So now, if you're trying to make a Marshall style amp, you want to use words like Plexi or JTM45 or JCM800, but you can't because those are all copyrighted names. So PV's designer decided to use some uh, symbols to kind of give a hint of what they were going after. And there's many different views on what these symbols actually mean. There's many different ideas. Um, so I'm going to give you the conglomeration of all the stories put together and uh, make a summary of what I've been told and some of what I feel based on the sound. Um, so now the amp is 140 watts. So it's extremely, extremely clean and loud. So with a Marshall, uh, especially the older ones, you needed that power tube distortion to be able to get the true tone. Well, at 140 watts, it's very difficult to get that power tube distortion. Um, the PV Penta amp from a marketing standpoint and a sales standpoint was a flop. It didn't sell enough. And the reason I think that is, is because most people who tried them in a store were not able to turn them up loud enough to get that power tube distortion. Now that being said, there's no club or stage that you're gonna be able to use it um, at that volume either without the sound man saying, turn it down to one and then you lose everything from there. So, but I have an answer and hopefully by the end of this video, it can show you what this amp was supposed to do rather than what everybody got out of it. So, so the first step is, we're going to go channel by channel and I'm going to show you how each channel sounds and uh, how it's affected by the, the pentatone switch. So, so we're going to start off here on the tree setting. 
um, the tree that is a palm tree and some people say that could be an orange tree some people say it's a palm tree like uh, California but to my ears it just sounds like a JTM 45 um, the Marshall uh, when they copied the Fender Basement amp and made their own they made the JTM 45 and to me it sounds like that it's very very clean and then it slowly starts to get a little bit of gain if you crank it all the way up so today I'm gonna to be running the volume on about uh, one and a half because that's about where you're gonna be able to use it at a club or during a live setting um, if it gets any louder than that um, no one would be able to use it so I'm gonna show you a little bit here and there and at the end I'm going to uh, like I say wrap it all up by showing you what it was supposed to sound like so step one let's set on the tree setting today I've got my ESP Horizon custom two humbuckers uh, custom wound by wound for sound here in Fort Wayne Indiana and uh, with some coil taps we're gonna get all kinds of tones so let's start here on the tree setting with the neck pickup Big, fat, round, tons of clean, uh, fantastic clean channel. Let's try the middle position. How about the bridge? You can hear definitely a British style clean. Um, yeah, just super duper duper clean. And I'm on the bridge and I'm pushing pretty hard and it's trying to break up, but man, it's got a ways to go. Let's go to the next channel. This would be the star setting. Um, some people call that the Marshall setting um, because of the star, the Marshall six pointed star. But like I say, to my ears, they're all Marshalls. But this, to my ears, sounds the most like a 100 watt um, super lead. So this would be your plexi style amp. Um, you can hear the gain increase just a little bit. Just to, to note as well, I've got the gain setting on about eight. So it's getting the almost all gain. So it's getting a lot of preamp gain, and but you can hear it's fairly thin. And I think this is what turned most people off. They're expecting that thick, chewy Marshall distortion when the real, reality it's really thin. So here's the star setting on neck pickup. pickup bridge pickup Definitely uh, super lead Marshall territory there. Um, a little thin and crispy, but uh, it doesn't sound horrible. It's just got sort of a thin sound to it. So now the next one. Now, as you notice, 
when I go from tone to tone with the pentatone switch, I'm going to get a volume change. Um, and I believe that's why this amp was not able to be a channel switching style amp, is because the volume changes when you switch channels. And so that would be very difficult to use live without some sort of a modification to the circuit to lower the volume and make sort of a unity gain. Um, but listen, I'm going to play a little bit and change it while I'm playing so you can hear the volume difference between the two settings. So this is the star. So as you can see, there's a big volume boost. Uh, it may get compressed, being that this is a video on YouTube, but um, hopefully you can hear the volume difference there between the two. There's a gain difference and a volume increase. So if you wanted to use this live, you'd have to change channels and then turn the volume down just a smidge to be able to uh, accompany that change. So I'm gonna move the volume down just a little bit. And back the gain off too on this setting. So, so this setting is the bowl setting. Now, the story goes that George Lynch uh, was involved with this amp. Uh, that could neither be confirmed nor denied uh, by the experts, but uh, all signs seem to point that George Lynch was trying to do a signature amp with PV. Um, for a super lead slash JCM 800 style amp, which would make sense because here we are. Um, and so he had a 50 watt 1968 super lead that he called the Brahma amp. And I don't know if it was modified or what, but it just was his special amp. He still uses it to this day. And this channel was the representation of that 50 watt um, amp if you choose to believe that the rumors are true with George Lynch. So let's take a look at it. I backed the gain off to about 65% and here's what we've, we've got so far. <laughs> So you can tell much more percussive, much more gain, um, just like a, a hot rod of JCM 800 is what it sounds like to me. Tons of gain, tons of gain, tons of, per, of uh, percussion. Um, sounds great, I really like it. Once again, thin, a little thin. Um, it sounds good, but just, it just doesn't have any thickness to it, no body like you expect out of a Marshall. Now let's take the gain back up to that 80% or so, and here's what we've got. <laughs> So tons, tons, tons of tons of gain. <laughs> um, okay, so that's the Brahma setting. The fourth setting is a cactus. Uh, like once again, like the other three, it's up for debate. Uh, was this a cactus as in like Texas? Was this a cactus as in Mesa? Like Mesa Boogie? Um, who knows? I know tone-wise, if you listen here, it's much more creamier, less percussive, um, it's just as much gain as the bull setting, but it's just a little, uh, a little creamier, a little bit more mids, and yeah, a little bit less top end as well. Let me show you what we've got. I'm gonna put it back to that 65% setting, and here's what we've got with the uh, cactus setting. Mm -hmm. 
As you can see, just a little different character, similar to the bull, but uh, different speed, different type of tone, a different mid characteristic with this one, and uh, a little bit looser on the bottom end. So now the fifth setting is the trucker girl setting. I made a huge mistake when I first got this amp and I left the treble bass mid controls where they were and listen to what it sounds like. Very, very, very thin, um, almost like a bad AM radio or something. I mean, it just sounds terrible. And as you know, PV at the time made the triple X amplifier, which was really heavy, their dual rectifier uh, type of tone. And so when the uh, possible buyers of this amp saw the trucker girl they thought hey this may be a triple x style uh, circuit in this amp with a marshall that i mean that's perfect but then they heard it and they went what in the world but the triple x amp uses active eqs so a plus a zero plus or minus rather than just a zero to ten you can either add mids or reduce mids or add low end or reduce low end and so this wasn't explained very well in the manual and I mean who's reading the manual at Guitar Center when they're trying this amp out you know but so the key to this amp it, or this tone setting is to put everything at noon when you do that now it's at zero on a active EQ style. Um, now listen to the difference. Much, much different. Let me actually boost the volume up because we've got that same problem we just talked about where the volume changes tremendously. So I bump the volume up just a little bit and uh, here's what we've got. Now to my ears that needs more bass, so I'm going to turn the bass up and I'm going to turn the treble down a little bit. Now let's see what we've got. Hear that bass that's in there? It, you, it's more bass, not a little bit more bass, a lot more bass. So you're actually adding a whole bunch of bass to the uh, initial tone. Now if you want to cut the bass completely out, you bring it back the opposite way, and here we are. See what I'm saying? So to my ears, that bass up here sounds great, treble down, and even some more mids to my ear, and here's what we've got. Now I'm going to add more gain to this because it definitely needs it and here's what we've got. So as you can see without knowing that information, without having this information ahead of time, um, you go to the store, your local guitar store, you see the amp, you plug into it, and you go, wow, that is terrible. I don't want that. That's not what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, it's just, it's an awful type of a sound because they don't understand how it was designed. Now, to be fair, that design was a little questionable maybe compared to what uh, most guitar players are used to doing, but at the same time, 
Um, there's got to be a balance there that has to be explained in great detail before a prospective buyer. So was it a fault of marketing? Was it a fault of the AMP design itself? Was it a fault of the stores not explaining it well enough? Who knows? But at the end of the day, people tried it, they didn't like it, and it did not sell whatsoever. It was considered a flop in the world of PV, and they were planning on making a second version of it, a 212 combo, and that didn't even leave NAM because there was so little interest in the, in the initial head and cabinet itself. So now I promised you a little secret to this amplifier and that I'm going to show you next. So hang tight and I'll be right back with the answer. Now this my friends is a Bugera power soak. What is a power soak you may ask? A power soak is a device that goes between the amp head and the speaker cabinet and it allows the amount of wattage to the speakers to change um, using this big knob. Uh, it's got 100% all the way down to 0% and it soaks the voltage, I do believe, going to your speakers um, and it what they would consider an attenuator would do. So it's attenuating the sound to a lower volume, but it allows you to push your tubes at full um, capacity. So you use your amp as far as how much you want to push the tubes, and then you use the attenuator for the amount of volume you want to come out. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm here on the sheriff setting, which would be the Marshall or the super lead plexi type setting. And a lot of famous tones have came from a plexi that was cranked all the way up. But obviously that's not going to happen in any sort of live setting whatsoever because of the volume. So what you do is you s plug this in, set your amp where you want it to be, and as you increase the master volume, you lower the attenuator. Okay, so let me show you what I'm talking about here. So that would be on barely two on the um, sheriff setting. And that sounds good, but it's thin. So I'm going to turn the game back. I'm going to push that master volume up. Now, as you can see, that's almost noon. So that is very, very, very loud. Then I'm going to take the soak and bring it back here to about 30%. And here's what we've got. So immediately a change, a lot more mids, a lot more thickness, um, tons and tons and tons of thickness compared to unattenuated. So, and here's the beauty of it being adjustable. You can find a sweet spot there between what you're looking for versus what you can attenuate to. So let's try this up to 75%. Now we're really, really cooking the tubes. I'm going to bring this back down a little bit more and here's what we've got. Now that's the plexi style tone that everyone was chasing. And it was in here this whole time, but it has to be turned so loud to be able to get to it that it's nearly impossible. So, what's the answer? Buy an attenuator, put it in the loop. Now, this can be used live, but still get the tones that you're looking for. Right, that's what we're looking for if you're looking for that type of an amp. Let's turn the gain up just a little bit more and see what we get here. Now let's bring everything to 10, like I've heard some artists like to do. There it is, there's the sound. 
Now, it doesn't have to just be used on that setting. Let's try it on the third setting, the Brahma setting. Let's bring the gain back. Let's bring the tone back a little here. And let's see what this sounds like. Alright, we've heard that before. Let's try it at full blast again. It seems to really like that. So there's the sound, the sound that everybody would be after had this amp uh, first come out. That's what you're expecting to hear. And when you hear that cold, dry um, type tone where the power tubes aren't getting hot enough, you immediately get turned off by it and you immediately move on. So now, could they have built an attenuator inside the amp? No, I don't think that's possible. I don't think that was the goal at all. But it does make this amp completely usable and you get some tones out of it that are incredible. So what's the, the solution? My, my idea is if you can find one of these cheap, which they are out there cheap to be had, buy an attenuator, very inexpensive, plug it in and you can gig this amp anywhere at any time with fantastic tones. Um, I'm sure you could do the same with a Marshall, um, but it does have four other tones on tap. So I think it's a great bang for the buck amp um, if you have the ability to use the attenuator and play out with it. So, hey, hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, leave me some comments below if you like what you heard, if you have some different sound settings, or if some of those myths and secrets that you heard about um, you have some more clarification on. Uh, let me know down here, and uh, I appreciate it, guys. Have a good rest of your day.